So in this video, I'm going to provide a quick recap of frames and machines. So what I want to start with is talking about how frames and machines differs from trusses, which we've looked at previously. So for truss analysis, there's two assumptions that we need to make. One of them is that members are connected by pin joints, which means that those members are able to rotate freely at the pins. Um, and secondly, the, we're making the assumption that loads are only applied at the joints. So if we take a look at the two example trusses that I've um, provided here, we can see that definitely we have each of our different members being connected by pin joints on the end, and that any loads that are applied are directly onto the um, joints. So the result of these two things is that trusses contain only two force members. Okay. So every single member in those trusses is a two force member and since they're straight members each of them is going to be in either pure compression or pure tension. So if we move on to frames and machines the point of difference is where the loads can be applied. So here we're saying that loads can be applied at places other than at the joints. So if for example this structure here suddenly we decided to have a change in the loading and we were going to consider a force applied here through the center of one of the members and even like here for example through another center of a member we wouldn't be able to analyze this as a truss anymore it would need to be analyzed as a frame or a machine okay so the result here is that because we're saying that forces can be applied essentially anywhere onto the structure we no longer have just two force members we have a case where we contain multi-force members and as a result we need slightly different analysis techniques for frames and machines compared to what we do with trusses so scrolling down now to looking at the difference between frames and machines so there's two main points about what makes a frame a frame. So one of them is that frames are designed to transfer loads to the supports. So you can see here on the first one of the examples, we've got a force applied at the center of one of our members, which means that this one here is going to be a multi-force member and making it a frame. And we can see that this force is basically going to be um, have to be transferred from, on, from this member onto the support at the wall here, and this one as well onto the supports um, at the wall. Similarly, for this one here, we've got a weight hanging off the end of our frame, and we can see that this is going to have to have a load path all the way down to the supports against the ground. So the second point about a frame is that the members cannot move relative to each other, so it's like a static structure nothing moves okay so if we scroll down and look at what makes a machine a machine it's going to differ on those two points so the first one is that machines are designed to alter the effect of forces i.e mechanical advantage okay so if the two examples here we can see that this first one um, we're going to apply forces against um, the handles of this machine and it's going to result in some uh, force being applied on the end on this little um, circular um, component or whatever it is okay um, at the second one again it's some kind of lever system where we have like a balance weight out here balancing against the weight in here um, we're looking at mechanical advantage, it's, it's containing levers. Other examples of a machine which would provide mechanical advantage would be like a pulley. Um, we see them a lot. Obviously a pulley, yeah, again, alters the effect of, of the forces. So the other point about machines is that members can move relative to each other. So certainly here, when we push down on these two handles, we're going to move the handles and change the force at the end. Um, here again, if we, you know, change the weight out here, we're potentially going to change the position of this arm and make it move. So that's the difference between frames and machines. So the last thing that we are going to talk about is the analysis of these um, frames and machines. So the first thing that we can do is if we want to we can draw a free body diagram of the overall structure that we're interested in. So I've given an example here and I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate. So draw the free body diagram of the overall thing. So pulling it out, we've got this 15 kilonewtons acting down. We know we're going to have some um, support reactions. 
So we've got one at B here, which is going to push back up, BY. And we've got one at C, which I'll assume pushes back up, CY. And we've got a fixed support over here at A, which means it's going to have a horizontal, vertical, and moment reaction. So I'm going to take a guess again at directions. So AX, AY, and I'll assume a moment reaction, MA. All right, so that's the free body diagram of the overall structure. And hopefully you can see that if you tr did try to apply your equilibrium equations on this, you'd find that you have far too many unknowns um, than you then you have to be able to solve it, okay? So we've got three equilibrium equations, which means we can only solve for a maximum of three of unknowns of any one diagram. This one we have one, two, three, four, five, so it's not possible. So how we get around that is we can do a second set of free body diagrams, which is where we draw a free body diagram for each component that makes up your structure. And the key for this is remembering that you need to have equal and opposite forces um, on each component when you separate at the pins. So let's go ahead and demonstrate this. We're going to separate this into three different parts. We're going to have the part AD. We're then going to separate at this pin. So it's then going to become a second part, which is DE. Again, separate at this pin, and we get our final bit, which is EC. So if I draw the free body diagram of AD first of all, just pull out that little piece. So we're going to need to transfer down the um, you know, support reactions from at the wall. So this will be AX, AY, and MA. And this time we're separating at the pin as well. So this is the point D here. And we need to take a guess on what directions things are going to be. So it's a pin, it's going to have a horizontal and a vertical component. So I'm going to guess the vertical component goes upwards, call it dy, and I'll guess the horizontal part goes to the left, dx. So that's the free body diagram of just AD. If I now jump on and do the free body diagram of DE, okay. So again, we need to transfer down the external stuff. So we're going to have the 15 kilonewtons coming down here. And we also have the support at B in this section. So this is BY. And I've separated at the pin here at D. So this is where you need to consider the equal and opposite forces. So if I've assumed that the force is going to the left on that free body diagram, then it needs to go back to the right on the corresponding one. If it's going up here, it needs to go down here. So now I have equal and opposite forces at this point where I've separated um, at the pin. All right, so now I need to do basically the same thing on the other end because I have a second pin here at E that I'm going to separate against. So I need to take guesses on the directions. I'm going to guess EX and EY like this. And they're going to need to be corresponded to on the other diagram where E is involved. So this is now the part EC. So I'm separating at this pin at E, so I need equal and opposite forces on the two components. So if this is going to the left, this one needs to go to the right. And if this one's going up, this one needs to go down. Finally, I've got this um, reaction force on the end, CY as well. All right, so now we've ended up with um, three additional free body diagrams with which we're able to work. So if we go back, we still have our ability to apply the equilibrium equations. Remember, we have the three of them. So sum of forces in X, sum of forces in Y, and sum of moments have to be zero. And this needs to be true for every single free body diagram that we've drawn. So the key here is to start working with diagrams where you have a maximum of three unknowns, ideally, or being able to kind of find a solution or find an equation, I guess, that you can apply where you only end up with one unknown in the equation so you're able to solve directly. So it's a little bit of jumping back and forth between the different diagrams that you've got. But I think a good start for this particular example would probably be looking at the diagram EC here. Simply because you have three unknowns, you have three equilibrium equations, you're going to be able to determine um, each of them.
then it's just a matter of relabeling and moving across and between each of the diagrams and repeating the process until you've found everything that you're interested in. So I think that's all I've got for um, these frames and machines topics. There's a couple of examples um, for being able to work through, um, but otherwise that's all I've got and I'll see you in another video.